This is the Washington Times front page for Thursday, December 5th, 2024. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. A search is underway for the gunman who killed the CEO of United Healthcare outside of a New York City hotel as he was arriving to speak at a conference. Matt Delaney reports the New York Police Department said the masked shooter waited for Brian Thompson, chief executive of United Healthcare, before opening fire in a premeditated, preplanned, targeted attack at about 6.45 a.m. near the Hilton Hotel in Midtown Manhattan. The 50-year-old Thompson was shot in the back and rushed to a hospital, where he later died. Police said the shooter ran away and then rode off on an electric bike to evade arrest, last being seen in Central Park. Police described him as a light-skinned male wearing a light brown or cream-colored jacket, a black face mask, and a gray backpack. South Korea was largely calm as attention turned to the fate of President Yoon Suk-yeol after a disastrous attempt to impose martial law. Andrew Salmon reports Yoon has yet to comment on his next steps, but demonstrators gathered in Seoul to march on the presidential compound. Analysts said the military's restraint and Yoon's and his aides' apparent lack of planning contributed to the swift reversal of the plot. An impeachment motion was filed in the National Assembly and needs a two-third majority to pass the 300-member chamber. A vote on the motion could be held as early as Friday. Republican senators still have questions for embattled Defense Secretary nominee Pete Hegseth as his misconduct allegations pile up. Lindsey McPherson and Ben Wolfgang report Hegseth met with incoming Senate Majority Leader John Thune and soon-to-be Armed Services Committee Chairman Roger Wicker in a last-ditch effort to persuade Republican senators whose votes he will need to be confirmed. Assuming all Democrats oppose his nomination, Hegseth cannot afford to lose support from more than three Republicans. Hegseth has been accused of multiple misconduct actions, including allegations of sexual assault, financial mismanagement of veterans organizations that he ran, and excessive drinking in the workplace. The Supreme Court waded into transgender rights as it struggled to decide whether a state law barring the use of puberty blockers and other drugs for transgender children amounts to sex discrimination. Alex Swery reports the justices are worried about the implications of the case. Democratic appointees fret they could be upending fundamental rulings on interracial marriage if they side with the state, and Republican appointees worry that they might pave the path for transgender athletes to compete in women's sports. A 2023 Tennessee law bans puberty blockers, hormone therapy, and gender transition medical procedures for minors looking to change their birth gender. The Biden administration and American Civil Liberties Union say the law amounts to sex discrimination and is discrimination against transgender Americans. And finally, House Republicans are headed into the next Congress with a majority that will temporarily shrink to the bare minimum needed to control the chamber in the early months of Donald Trump's presidency. Alex Miller reports that majority will shrink temporarily from 220 to 217 seats thanks to three lawmakers resigning some to serve in Trump's administration. One Republican defection on a bill would result in a 216-216 tie and a defeat if all members are present and no Democrats vote with Republicans. House Speaker Mike Johnson shrugged off the zero-seat margin at least for a couple of months. He says Republicans have developed an expertise in having little wiggle room. Find all of today's Trump page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash Trump page or on the Washington Times app and find us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on social media at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo. Marketing is hard. But I'll tell you a little secret. It doesn't have to be. Let me point something out. You're listening to a podcast right now, and it's great. You love the host. You seek it out and download it. You listen to it while driving, working out, cooking, even going to the bathroom. Podcasts are a pretty close companion. And this is a podcast ad. Did I get your attention? You can reach great listeners like yourself with podcast advertising from Libsyn Ads. Choose from hundreds of top podcasts offering host endorsements or run a pre-produced ad like this one across thousands of shows to reach your target audience in their favorite podcasts with Libsyn Ads. Go to libsynads.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N, ads.com today.